Hello, my name is Chad Ardoff. I'm one third of ABO Outdoors. Um, pretty camera shy as a whole. Um, but we're going to give this a go. My plan today is to make a uh, incredibly pink spinnerbait. Um, I'm going to try some new things here. I have painted blades in the past and they turn out pretty well. Um, purchased a lot of baits, uh, or blades, pardon me, and um, have made my own uh, skirts many times in the past, but I'm trying a whole bunch of new things. We'll see if any of these work out. Um, I will also I throw a link in the description below the video here of where I get my stuff to start with and um, hopefully you don't find anything I'm doing too difficult and you can give it a shot yourself. Alright, with that said, let's get started. Alright, I'm not going to pretend that all of this is super easy and, you know, not a bit of work. Um, you know, there's a bit of work in anything you, you know, in anything you do, but these, um, they're miserable. And so, what you do here to make the skirt is you get you can buy the pre um, the pre peeled ones of these for a lot more money and what I've done is I've done a few it comes like this and you make it like this by sitting here and peeling these little pieces apart so they're I don't know kind of ribbed and between the ribs you're peeling each strand apart and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to sit here and peel strands all the, all night for you on the video I'll, I'll skip ahead and uh, we'll uh, when you come back what you'll see is three stacks here of what I've done in order to uh, basically build the skirt material out um, yeah Okay, um, yeah, I got a little interrupted there, uh, so I'm going to have to remember where I left off. Do, 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 peeling stuff, peeling stuff's no fun, I don't like doing it, um, good talk. So here's where we're at right now, is we got to put these inside of one of these things, which are basically a little rubber little rubber tube. Now my hands are all filthy from, well, putting the garage door back on for my neighbor, but we got this thing. So we're just going to go with it. So I know that they make other tools for this purpose and, you know, I'm sure they work great. Um, the, I've seen them, they look like a uh, the end of a pen basically, you slide this up, you slide the other stuff into the pen and you'll see them if you look at for it and um, the problem is when you're doing a uh, musky size spinner bait or large pike or whatever um, they're well quite frankly just too long to fit in the goofy tube so this and we don't have to talk about what it is. Those that know, know. Those that don't, uh, you know, it's good you don't. No, it's uh, it's for well, yeah. Okay, so moving on. So basically, what I do is I grab a few of these at a time. I open this up and I feed them in there. Not a lot to it. Um, in this case, what I'm probably going to do is double. Double, double my material so basically uh, I'm just going to feed it through as a loop into that into that that jaws because doubled material double of the material is going to give me enough to cut I don't know if that is in frame I bet you it is now um, that'll give me enough to cut 
So I'm going to double each one of these pieces of material and um, basically pull it through there. Um, I've got way more pink than I need and um, well that's about it. And then once I've doubled it through you know that when it when it comes all the way it'll fold over and you know basically look like a skirt. So I'm going to well fix what I started here um, and I'll show you how I get these through well that thing and um, we'll go from there. Okay. All right. For those of you that haven't figured it out by now, um, I'm a pretty fancy guy, right? So uh, we were particular and picky and fancy about every little thing. No, I'm not. Um, so what I've made, I, you know what? I was going to show you. Um, it's just a piece of wire bent over with a loop on the end, a little bit of a loop. Oh boy, I got that close to you. I bet you that hurt your eyes. It's like, ooh, coming at you. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm feeding this into that loop. And the loop size is relatively important, I guess, because you gotta be able to get it through, um, well, our um, tool. <laughs> Just, yeah, I feel terrible, but you know. I feel bad for the sheep. Anyway, so we just work this in. You'll notice I'm putting the red in the middle here. Um, I don't know, some people call that a bloodline. They call it all kinds of goofy things. But putting the red in the middle there gives me the opportunity to have that run through the whole strand. So, you know, it's all good. And then, like I said, I made way too much pink, which saves me time later. So, it's uh, in the end, you know, all good stuff. So, I am just feeding that pink stuff into that loop there. And I'm probably, there I am, try to stay in camera here. And you'll see by the time I'm done, it won't look quite as hideous as, as all that. And so, that's about it. Now, it, the excess doesn't matter because there's so much of it. I'm going to be trimming a lot of material off of this. But I'm hoping you can see that pretty plainly. Okay, we'll give it a go. This is not going to go swimmingly for me because, well, why would it? So basically you just push it in here and hopefully get it far enough through like this roughly halfway is what I was after and what I'm doing if you're wondering so I'm eyeballing it up is all that's it that's halfway through and you can see it's already starting to become a skirt then what I do is this is uh, really it's just um, what do you call it uh, cheap wire or really lightweight wire um, it's I use it to, to tie off things for trapping so it's not uh, it's not anything I use to make lures out of but it is definitely a handy thing for what I'm doing with it. So there that is. And then hopefully you can see this. I just roll that down. And I've now made a spinnerbait skirt. I mean, that's really, I know that was fun and exciting for us all. Um, <laughs> but you know it is what it is so that's uh that's how you make a how i make a spinnerbait skirt and again it's not at all how probably anybody else is going to show you because they probably don't use well that it's just when you're making these great big skirts i don't know i don't know how, how else a guy could do it anyhow that's how she works so i now all i do is I start cutting this scissors I just start cutting this until it all falls over 
you know, you're not going to, obviously I'm not, I didn't hit, oh, there I missed a loop, but there it is. And that, if that makes any sense at all, is how that skirt works. And it's just a skirt like any other skirt. I, uh, you can see I make the, the uh, top a little bit smaller than the bottom, but, you know, that's how I guess I like them. So it trails better. Um, usually what I'll do is, with the hook, my favorite thing to do is hang it, is have a lot of material. There you go. Thank you. And then I hang a trailer hook from the back. And I'm sure I'm off camera and completely out of frame because, well, yeah, because me. Okay, for the... Uh, Two of you who are still watching this video, I'll start in with uh, what I do to uh, basically set up a lure to be painted and paint the lure. So they come like you see it. They're not much to them. Um, this particular one, this I really like. Um, the eye is closed. To me, that's important. I. Uh, I sometimes will fish, hey, that was nice of yeah. you. Um, I'll sometimes fish a uh, leader, most of the time I'll fish a leader. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course it clips in. And uh, with the, uh, the, the hooks are incredibly sharp and this has the capacity for the skirt here and something secondary there that holds on pretty good. So. I don't normally uh, run a whole lot as far as, I'm going to say a twister tail, but you know, a double twister or some kind of trailer on them, but these can hold it if you want to. Um, the only thing you have to do to these things to ready them for paint is, well, clean them. Um, you give them a little bit of a bath. Um, this is what I use to clean my airbrush. It's um, basically um, Windex mixed with uh, watered down and mixed with a little bit of alcohol. Now you know. Um, well, there's some lubricant, I uh, can't remember what I call it, what they call it, glycerin in there as well that, well, it doesn't seem to affect anything really, but it keeps the airbrush lubed up. And so, that is all I do to get it ready to to paint. Just try to get my greasy fingers off there and call it good. Um, the other thing that I do, and I don't know if you notice or if you can tell, that is what I'm rubbing off. Um, the uh, base coat of the paint, I think it matters that it sticks well. Um, in my opinion, I guess I don't have too strong an opinion, but the, uh, I put epoxy over these when I'm done, but I think, quite frankly, you can't rely on just the epoxy 100%. I think you have to have some adhesion of, um, the paint too. So I'm going to grab the tape from behind me. Um, and uh, I'll show you the taping up. Okay, got the tape, got my rolly chair that I never rolly on, and I'm just gonna grab enough tape to make it around here. And the reason I tape it isn't necessarily that big a deal if these get paint on them. You know, they it comes right off. Just ten seconds with your finger fingernail, and off they come. But I tend to tape them up just to make sure that I when I spray them, like I'll spray uh, different things in between the layers sometimes, um, depending on what I want to do. So I'll put in like a clear 
be, you know, over the top before I epoxy sometimes or I'll hit this with a clear. If I'm going to be a while, I cleaned it and I didn't want to get, didn't get right back to it or whatever it might be. And that stuff, it, uh, not as easy as the, well, cheap acrylic paint to get off, you know, so that's why. So, without further ado, I suppose, or do, I do, I do, we'll, we'll talk about the next step. Um, so, because this is going to be a bright color, it always helps to set the base a little bit with a white color. So, the, the bright pinks and the bright fluorescents and so on and so forth, if you start with a white base or a white color for the base, they seem to pop a little bit better. Um, I also have a tendency to do a little bit at a time. So this is a metallic and this will show through. So, um, the, you know, the, the way that I usually work this is I'll come in here halfway up with the fluorescent and then I'll hit the top piece right here with the pink and the rest will just remain that, that uh, lighter color or the white or if I get the fluorescent down there a little bit, that's okay, that'd be good, but it really is a spinnerbait head so it's that long. So you can't get too fancy with it and I guess if you do it's kind of you know it's, an, it's a reaction bait I guess. I, I, I don't guess I'm really saying it's a reaction bait so um, muskies will follow it but they're following from behind so it's not that they're you know going around the around and around circles and giving it an eyeball there. They're behind it. Most of the time when you um, oh, this is basically the same stuff. The difference here is in the mix, and you can plainly see there's no window cleaner. Um, you have to be careful with the window cleaner, too. Um, I can go into some detail, maybe in a future video, if anybody asks. But what I'm doing there is I'm thinning the paint. Um, and I thin the paint so it sprays better through the airbrush. That's all I'm doing. I get I do smaller coats and I just you know instead of me trying to do everything at once and have it really heavy on there a light coat because I'm going to end up putting quite a few coats of paint on this thing to get the colors I want basically. And you can see that it's very pearl. Very very pearl. And the heavier this is the harder it is to spray through, the more pressure I have to use and the more volume I get on there. And so you don't want it incredibly thin so it's water, but you do want it, I don't know, the consistency of like a heavy milk or, I, you know. In the end, you do it a few times and you're going to get a feel for it. How's that? That's just honest. You see that nice drip won't even come off. Come on, you. There you go. So, you already have to listen to the compressor run. So, I'm not going to turn that fan on. So, here we go. So, you basically... You just give it... I know I mixed up a ton, but you just give it enough to fill the bottom. And you see it's starting to go already. And you see it doesn't cover that much in one shot. It only covers just a small amount every time I hit it, right? So hopefully you can see that the white is going on. A pearl over a silver really is, you know, kind of, well, it's hard to see. But I'm not trying to, 
to kill it here. I'm just trying to get some paint on it in order for it to shine through the next layer. I'm going to set this up down and off, off camera I've got a little, I can show you this stuff later too, heat gun. And what I'm doing here is I'm just waiting, I'm hitting it enough to wait for the shine to change. And right there it changed. So you can actually tell when the paint is set by the difference in the color. I know that sounds weird, but the, it'll uh, basically it'll be less shiny. It'll, um, it, it'll Instead of looking wet, it'll look drier, I guess. I don't know. Words. So, here we go. We got this thing going. Second coat, right? And again, I am not trying to paint anywhere really heavy, but I need enough paint on here in that white so the, sa the dark silver doesn't overtake the bait. And that, when it dries, will look pretty good, I think. So, that's that. Uh, so, me cleaning between this airbrush is amazing. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was really, really inexpensive. It was under $30, and it sprays so well that... Uh, it's going to break my heart when I ruin it because eventually everything wears out, you know how it is. But for under 30 bucks, I guess I can just replace it. Um, but it has, I've had this one now going on six months and have had zero problems and I have zero complaints. So I guess that's something. All right. And that right there is clean enough for me to mix up a pink to match our other pink. So I always try, I don't know, my best I guess, to match um, the components I'm using. Right there, I, hopefully you can watch that flow, the consistency. Um, but yeah, you know. Shamrock Shake. No, that, those are the color of my shirt. What did, what did you call that? Pepto-Bismol? Yeah, we'll call it Pepto-Bismol. Anyway, so that's the pink. Next I'm going to try to knock out kind of a bright chartreuse color. Uh, notice that I've got some red in there that is going to overtake this just a little bit. But that's the base for that. Um, the difficulty that we're going to run into next, well, first is uh, my inability to articulate anything. The second will be um, the bleed from one paint color to another. We've got the white, and the white's our base, and we've been over that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this thing with this yellow, and then I'm going to cut, I'm going to dry it. I'm going to put clear coat on it, and then I'm going to come back and do the pink. And the reason I do that is to keep the colors from bleeding together, um, and to keep them as well crisp as possible. There's still going to be your eyes still going to see some bleed between them, but. I promise it won't bother you as much as if I had just sprayed one over the other. You'll notice I'm not turning it completely upside down here. I'm just hitting the sides. And the reason I'm doing that is to keep the base kind of a lighter color. I 
I know a lot of guys will count the number of passes they made with the airbrush. Um, yeah, me no. So I just, yep, paint it. This is actually kind of a color shift color that I put on here. Again, I'm just trying to get close. This isn't a, it's not a piece of, piece of art, it's a fishing lure, so um, I probably won't hang it on my wall and look at it later. I'm hoping to see it destroyed by a huge pike or a muskie, so that's yeah, just life. So, but in the end, you know, you want things nice. I've got it tilted very much towards me. Um, I guess I don't know how else to put that. Because I am trying to get a bit of an effect out of it where you get kind of a... This particular spinnerbait head has got a lot of really cool shape to it. Um, I don't know if you can see that. But it's got uh, basically a gill plate. It's got, it, it is really a cool, cool shape. And so um, what I'm going to do is I've tilted towards me and hopefully it'll leave these cheeks kind of a darker color and that green will be suggested more than, or yellow, green, whatever, will be more suggested than it'll be anything else. Um, you know, it won't be quite as prominent as it is now. The reason it really stands out, I think, is because <laughs> there's nothing else on there. So this pink, Pepto Bismol here, is going to take quite a few coats, I'm afraid. And what I'm doing here is, you see, if I hadn't sprayed. I wanted to show you a little bit. There's still, you know, I'm cleaning the brush and there's still a little bit of yellow. Guess what? Now it's orange. Now it's pink. See what I mean? I hope you can see that. I don't know if you can. I'll have to look. But there it is. So, by spraying it, you get less of that orange when you're after pink. I guess is the truth. And what I'm doing I hope you can see this, and I guess if you can't, I'll move it so you can. But I'm leaving and the reason it's binding up on me is because uh, I was in a hurry and I didn't clean back as much of the uh, yellow as I should have, but it'll come. And I do not want to overdo this. Not my goal. And I'm working side to side. Is all I was after. Okay, I went out and sprayed a, another coat of clear over the top of the whole thing. The reason I do that um, isn't necessarily to uh, set the paint or do anything fancy. Uh, the reason I do it is because when you put the eyes on, you're handling it sometimes and you get your fingers on there and you can scratch that that stuff pretty easy the clear hangs up holds on just a little bit better um, and so I don't know that's why I do it it's not by any means the end coat it's just you know what I'm doing so I have a bunch of eyes I just I don't know why. I just like them. And so it's really, I sit and deliberate and I always go back to the first one I picked anyway. But eh, it's all good. So in the end, I'm just going to go back to the first one I picked anyway. Um, and I still am doing it, see? 
the finding a actual good tweezers took a hot minute too. I don't know what the difference between a regular minute and a hot minute is, but I knew somebody that said that quite a bit. Hot minute. So, yeah. I guess it's uh, between this air compressor and my dropping stuff. At least you know it's a real video, right? Um, these eyes, this size, they actually um, in the these, these spinner baits are probably the. Uh, Nicest, most forgiving piece of, I don't know, lurey, makey stuff that you can find. The eyes actually, that size, snap in, so they're recessed. If you haven't, it's, well, I could probably screw it up, but so far I haven't. Um, and they, they hold on really, really well. Um, multiple fish, many, many, many sharp teeth, and uh, they just don't tend to fall out. So the other thing is the when I'm clear coating it, they, well, they hold on really, really, really well. So now it's just a matter of before you put the clear on, it's, it's always a pretty good idea to peel the tape off. These brushes I get in bulk and it always helps to kind of give them a little bit some flicks with your with your fingers. I know it's probably somebody out there is gonna drive them nuts that I just eyeball it up and make sure the dollops about the same size for both parts and I'm not always perfect, but I'm never in a huge hurry with it. So even though it's five minute epoxy, if you mix it wrong, it can set too fast, it can set too slow. So basically when I do it, I'm just looking for a 50-50. When I'm using the same brush that I'm going to put it on with, I mix it up and I guess, uh, you know, for some people that could be problematic. For me, it's, I don't, know, I don't know what day it is, Tuesday. So I don't really get too worked up over the whole deal. It uh, I have yet to have it be so far off or so bad that it doesn't work well. Um, maybe it's just the epoxy super forgiving. We'll go with that. So, yep. Real top secret squirrel stuff here. You just paint it on. Um, so, yeah, that is about, well, that's about it. So I just leave this sit now and come back and it's a five minute epoxy. So I come back in about a half an hour and, uh, usually it's pretty set up. Okay. Let's see what we can do here for the three of you that are maybe left or, you know, join later. No, that's not really how that works. Well, yeah, we'll see. So what I'm doing here is I'm being as awkward as possible because that's how I roll. And I'm going to peel this vinyl. That's a pick. away from the backing. Um, that's not much to it. Lay it on here. And what I'm doing is I'm working it from the inside out. Vinyl is good stuff. Especially on, well, other vinyl. It sticks great to uh, vinyl, and it sticks great to really clean, clear surfaces. 
this well it's neither so we're gonna see how well I can do here just gonna take some of it off here shaped like a spinner blade thingy over. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing so I'm just working that back and forth into it. And that, well that's that. It's super touchable so we're not scared. And uh, eee, fun times. Um, Are you? You just you hey. Okay. Real excited watching the guy put a skirt on. But hey, there we go. I know it's just a skirt. So and now you get the effect. And that, see how it kind of there you go, kind of matches up there. Not a big deal. And yeah, that's the look. And our next phase here are these blades. Okay, so knowing me, 90% of this is out of frame, impossible to see, nobody knows what I'm doing, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'll just set this somewhere, just set it somewhere there. That's set somewhere. Um, so basically, I'm just putting some beads on here. Um, probably be admonished for not using brass um, but this really hasn't been an issue for me and I guess if it becomes one I'll change it um, I don't know why, but I've never really had a problem um, with these smaller blades spinning, so I'm just going with her. Um, sometimes what I have trouble with is these pre-painted ones. Sometimes the hole's too small for sure enough. Hey, guess what? That hole's too small. I gotta get a different one of these. I'll be back. Okay, you can't say I didn't warn you. I said I'd be back, and, well, here I am. So, I don't know. I just put beads on. So, these really just act as a bearing. More, more than anything, I think. Everybody kind of knows what I mean by that. Um, and... I've already seen a spinner bait before, so I don't have to over explain that either. It's just like cups in the wind. Well, when you cast, this thing tilts back, so don't worry about it being touchy up here. That's just part of the deal. Alright, so everything I'm doing now is pretty self explanatory, I think. I'm just loading her up to finish her off. A spinner bait. It's going to be what you did to. Oh, did I? Yep. I need a uh, 
bigger split ring. But it's going to be what you did to this end right here that's going to cause you the pain um, or lose you the blade or do whatever negative thing you can come up with. Um, and you end up with a spinner bait with, well, no spinner, so that that's pretty pretty sad. And so you have to be kind of, I don't know what you call it, diligent at words at uh, when you bend this eye. Okay, so everything I'm doing is probably pretty boring. So I'll just tell you guys a story. So. There's three of us brothers, um, Aaron, Ross, myself, and, uh, well, we grew up kind of a ways out of town. I mean, it, it was a really small town, really small town. And so, I mean, you could put in the time on your bike and get into town. No, that wasn't a terrible thing all the time, but most of the time, we spent together, kind of a little bit isolated, not terribly, but enough. And uh, so we were always making up things to do. And one day I decided, hey, it'd be kind of fun. We'll, you know, make our own zoo, you know. And uh, so we kind of went along with me and we made up a little you know, kind of pen or cagey type deal, you know. And, uh, well, we, uh, it, I really didn't do a lot of pre-planning. I just, you know, I was a kid. And so the zoo wasn't, we'll just say, as good as it could be. Um, the zoo had one animal in the end. Um, it was a dog. It was a Shih Tzu. Get it? Yeah. All right. Haley, I did that one for you. So what I'm doing is I'm closing that gap and you can see that there's still, eh, you know, uh -uh, there's still that naughty part. And so if I really give her the goods, now you can see there's no naughty part. Um, and now you can see what I did here is, well, made a pink and yeller. It's actually a little bit yeller spinnerbait. So... If that's fun, that's fun. That's the end of her.